This video deals with Bayes' theorem, also known as Bayes' rule or Bayes' law. It is a useful theorem uh, that gives us some insight into how conditional probabilities work. Recall that the probability of A and B being true is equal to the probability of A given that B is true multiplied by the probability of B. Of course, when two things are true, we can swap the order around without consequence. So this is also equal to the probability of B given that A is true times the probability of A. So that's simple algebraic manipulation. Now if we take this and move this probability of A over to the other side of this equation, then we get this following expression, which is the most common expression of Bayes' theorem. The probability of B given A is equal to the probability of A given B multiplied by the probability of B all divided by the probability of A. So this is Bayes' theorem. So let's see how this can be used. It's typically useful for inferring the cause of some observed effect. And so I can rewrite it by changing A and B for the words cause and effect to give you an idea of what I mean by this. The probability that some particular thing is the cause of some observed effect is equal to probability of that effect happening given that the cause is true times the probability of that cause occurring over probability of that effect in general. So this is often useful for medical purposes in determining if some certain symptoms are likely caused by some particular illness. Another good example is the following, which can, shows out some counterintuitive facts about how probability behaves and how conditional probabilities interact with each other. Let's say that there is a new drug test that is very accurate at, at detecting a particular drug. So we have the probability that some test returns a positive result given that some particular individual actually is using this particular drug equals 99%. So we'll have lots of true positives on this test. If you really are using this particular drug, then this test is very, very likely to accurately detect that. Now let's also say that the test will fail. You'll get a negative result on the test if it is the case that you are not a drug user of that particular drug anyway, also 99% of the time. So if you're using that drug, this drug will identify you almost all the time. If you're not using that drug, this test will fail almost all of the time. It seems like a really good test, but what if the prevalence of people within the general population that actually use this particular drug is fairly small. So it's 0 0.005. So just to emphasize what's going on here, this means that very few people use the drug. Now this is an important thing to consider because if you are, for example, a company that wants to give drug tests to your employees, 
then you can consider that population of employees to be a general sample of the larger population of all people. So there's no reason to expect that the prevalence of users of that particular drug will be any higher within your company than anywhere else. But because the company wants to make sure none of its employees are using this particular drug, it will test everyone. And that's where we get some strange consequences. Now, if we plug in these variables to Bayes' theorem, we get the following formulation. The probability that someone actually is a user of this particular drug, given that they test positive, equals, once again, the probability that they test positive, given that they actually use that drug, times the probability in general of someone using that drug over the probability of getting a positive test result. So the reason that the company would want to compute this, that the probability that you actually use the drug given the test, is that you want to make sure that when people get a positive test, that you can be fairly certain that they actually are using that drug and presumably if you're a company you'd want to fire individuals that were doing so. But this calculation we're about to do indicates why it's not really fair to do that. So here is what we're going to calculate. I'll move this paper up here so we can carry that calculation out. So this term, the probability that the test is true given that the individual uses that drug, is right here. So we have 0 0.99 times the probability in general of someone using this drug. So the P probability of being a user of that drug is very small, 0 0.005. And then we have the probability of getting a positive test result. And this requires a bit of calculation. Uh, once again, for any uh, random variable, we know that the probability of that particular result is the sum of all other influences of having both that outcome and this other information. So that means that in this case, probability of test is the probability of both getting a positive test and using the drug plus the probability of getting a positive test and not using the drug. And this still is something that we don't have directly, but we can calculate it because the probability of this and this is equal to the probability of the test given that you use the drug times the probability of using the drug. So let me simply write that out. We have first the term on top, uh, 0 0.99 times 0 0.005 over, so this term becomes the probability of a positive test given that the individual is using that drug times the probability of someone using that drug. And then this term becomes the probability of getting a positive test and given that someone does not use the drug times the probability of not using the drug. We're getting closer. Um, this value is right here. That value is right here, so we can plug those in. These ones we don't quite have, but we can get them. So let's go step by step. So we still have 0 0.99 times 0 0.005 over. This term is 0 0.99 times 
zero, zero, five. So looking very familiar. And then this is added to these terms here. Well, the probability of getting a positive test, given that you don't use the drug, um, can be calculated as follows. So let's just take this over here and we'll plug the actual number in in a moment. This is equal to one minus the probability of getting a negative test, given that you do not use the drug. Because a positive test and a negative test are the only possibilities, we have the same condition for each value. So if we add these two values up, that should sum to one. So what we're putting here is one minus the value right here, which is also 99%. Negative test given that the person is not a drug user. So 0 0.99. And that is multiplied by the probability of someone not being a drug user, which of course is one minus the probability of being a user of that drug. And we can calculate that too. That's one minus this 0 0.005. And if you carry out all of these calculations, then the answer you get is approximately equal to 0 0.332, which is fairly shocking Uh, and also has important consequences because what this says is that just because you get a positive drug test, sorry, um, doesn't necessarily mean there's a high chance of you being a user of that drug. So only about 33% of all the people who actually get a positive test are users of that particular drug. And what this essentially means is that it would be very, very unfair for a company to use this as a basis for making decisions about an employee's ability to continue working at a company. And Bayes' theorem gives us insight into the unexpected ways that conditional probabilities behave and interact.